Most companies that sell products make money by selling them to consumers. Pyramid schemes typically make money selling overpriced, difficult to sell products to their own distributors, who are typically aspiring entrepreneurs hoping to build a business. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. I am the best guy ever, Pharaoh best guy ever, because we're talking about Egypt today, of course, and we've got Mr. Mummy Hippocrate. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What nice. was that yes. entire intro? I don't know. You're a mummy now for this episode. Okay. Hello, it's me. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, ben uh, An- Anubis, dead? Yes. Well- Welcome to the Luxor Hotel, where you gotta you gotta hmm. die hmm. and go to hell. Oh, that right. rhymed because I am a genius. <laughs> and uh, oh, you know the? Did you know that in Egypt, uh, pharaohs were all buried with their pets? That's what Tom Oliver is. He's one of these things. <laughs> the pyramids weren't made by the Egyptians. They were made by aliens who were worshipped oh, yeah. as gods in the past. Google the Anunnaki. It's all fucking real. <laughs> You, you know, before we get into the actual topic, I just want to s- mm-hmm. relate an anecdote that um, okay. my Spanish teacher in high school, um, Mr. Um, What's-His-Face? Mi- Mr. Um, oh, God, what was his name? Mr. S- they called him Mr. Sabella? S- Mr. Sabella? Sabella. Mr. Sabella. Yeah. He legitimately believed that the Incan um, ziggurats were made with some kind of advanced lost technology that used <laughs> sonic waves to, Look, levi- to levitate stone blocks into Look, place. Look, I've watched Ancient Aliens. I know exactly yeah. how all that shit was made. <laughs> Is it so possible? Is Maybe. it possible? <laughs> all right. Is it, I have, I have would... a question about that. I, I have a couple okay. questions. One, one. why is it that they that they have like the skills of like a level one, a tier one Minecrafter? These aliens. Why, <laughs> why are they making anything? <laughs> it's got to be some sonic, some sonic nonsense. Yeah, of course. Look, what we what, make up, what we make up yourself... for our lack of technical ability with our creativity. That's why you know, given the correct a... tools, we can make crazy shit. Aliens, they got the technical shit mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. They're they're just not very creative, right? They make a they, big giant like three D triangle and they call it a day. That's true. There was a, there was a lot of uh, sonic powers back then. There was real sonic mania. Yeah, it was, oh, a, real, it was a real sonic boom back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, relevant to our friend hypocrite here. Uh, <laughs> well, all right, let's let's begin, everybody. So our Egypt theme episode is about pyramid schemes. Yay, boy! I understand howdy. it was the was the was the process of. Um, Worshipping alien sky gods. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Correct. So, okay, let's Correct. let's check over our, our buddies over at Urban Dictionary to see what they've got to say on the situation. Uh, okay, here we go. Pyramid scheme. This is uh, definition number two. The best scheme to ever set up once you learn to never underestimate. I hate this already. The stupidity of the human majority. Just make sure you don't get caught, though. Oh, I regret reading that. Wow, that's, that's terrible. Hip fucking fedora on that. I know. One. I yeah. know. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's. Okay. Let's try another one. Here's the top definition. I should have just gone to this one. Um, a fraudulent business model, illegal in most places, in which participants are paid to recruit more participants rather than commissions on sales, frequently passed off as multi-level marketing by incorporating sales of an unmarketable product or service into the scheme. In such cases, participants are usually required to maintain a monthly purchase quota to qualify for payments. Yes. Uh, all right. Well, that, that that's really it. That's, that's really the right one. That's the one. Now, I Multi- believe. It's like, multi-level it's like marketing. the business is... version of like a mm-hmm. zombie plague. Multi-level marketing yeah, is the yeah. is like is like the the softer, gentler form that is supposedly the politically legal. correct term, if you will. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what pyramid and, uh, schemes call themselves to get away with being pyramid schemes. Right, and uh, and Gib, you you described it as like a similar to the zombie outbreak, but it'd, it'd be like the zombie outbreak if like in order to make more zombies, you couldn't you, you didn't have to just touch them. You had to like convince them, like no, you got to understand, like being a zombie's great. You're really gonna want to you're really gonna uh, adapt to our if lifestyle. You buy and become this part of the family. Forty nine ninety nine dollar protein powder. You too can have this amazing zombie complexion. Yeah. Mm. Hey, you, you, speaking well, of that, that's I was funny. thinking that's... of it more in in the sense uh-huh. that eventually there's going to be so many of these people in oh, the thing that there's no one left to recruit, and they're like, "Well, we're going to just starve. There's no brains to eat. We're eventually, all zombies now," and they mm-hmm. all fall that, over. That's a fair point. It's interesting that you brought up protein powder because just the other day I was uh, I was coming back from the gym and I happened to stop in uh, I think CVS or whatever, and I was getting my my gigantic five pound box of of protein powder in the in the in the things, and like as I was buying it, this dude's like, "Hey." 
Hold up there, friendo. And this was like just like two days ago. Um, I have I got something for you. And he runs out to his car. He's like, Don't leave. And he runs out to his car. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Was this the guy who worked shit. was this the guy who worked there or just a No, it was a, he was loitering in the in the lobby. I, I hmm. think he was like buying something legitimately, but he happened okay. to see an opportunity and he dove on it when he saw me buying protein powder. He's like, oh, this is actually kind of sad. He 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 so he gives me like he comes back with like a pamphlet and like a little packet. Of, of some substance he's like here this is like the best protein powder ever we grow it in like greenland it's new it's fancy uh and it, it, was, it was actually like stumbling <laughs> grow this over protein in greenland what the, the fuck some, it might have been iceland but one of those and he was like yeah oh, no it was ireland, it, was it, must ireland. Be some, it must be some soy protein then if it's grown of course. somewhere okay. it, it definitely was but then like he was stumbling over the pitch he had clearly just learned this and yeah. hadn't like internalized it yet so i don't think this is really a pyramid scheme as much as just like a sales pitch in general but okay. um it was interesting. It was it was a similar sort of situation I just happened to find myself in. And uh, mm-hmm. needless to say, I threw it all in the trash as soon as he was out of my eyesight. <laughs> Why <laughs> did you even wait? Why do. did you wait? I be, because You should have done it easier. right in front of him to send a message. <laughs> but that's the thing. In order to deal with these kind of situations, I make it seem like I'm on board and then yeah. immediately throw everything away once they're gone so that I don't have to deal with the social ramifications of rejecting someone. <laughs> you're, it's much you're, easier for me. You, you, you're just like, mm, thanks. This is some good information. Dumps in the yeah. trash. Well, I'll, I'll look all this over and get back to you real soon. <laughs> Let me pass this off to my secretary. Dumps into garbage can. I'll be back with you soon. And then Oscar the Grouch comes out and he said, ah, I like it. It's uh, good. It's just, you said I could go home at five. I don't want to. Oscar, today. Oscar yes. comes out and he's like, Oh, this looks like a real good money making opportunity. Incidentally, I did look at the nutrition facts. Only 21 grams of protein per serving. My other thing has 25 grams of protein per well, serving. So fuck it this fails shit. On it's probably the got first level. like. Essential it's oils, be more expensive. essential oh, yeah, oils, or something, or like electrolytes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so, I'm sure. I'm sure. Some amino um, acids. It's a superfood. That is protein. Yeah. Uh, what is our angle on pyramid schemes? Because I don't think any of us like it. I know. I think, I think some are, of us have experience like, tell, with it, right? Yeah, tell stories. Yeah. Sort of. Well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, this this uh, Jackie suggested this topic to me, and I thought it was great because I have personal experience with it, as she does too. She's known people that have been involved in it and okay. um and then i went and i did some research and i there was this there's this blog called not quite fairy tales blog which is a girl's personal account of getting mm. like deep deep into the fucking mlm uh, rabbit hole uh, it's and it's ML- at, oh, multi-level, oh, multi-level market. market and it's apps mm-hmm. it's an it's a it's a pretty gripping read and it's absolutely disgusting uh, the way mm-hmm. it all the way it all goes down um, and then there's a documentary called Betting on Zero that is about this investor called Bill Ackman, who is um, he's yep. he's going he's going after. Have you seen it, Tom? I watched. It's funny because like I watched this like three days before you brought up this topic. So it's just really? like, huh, I'm there prepared for this. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's it's because he, he basically he invests tons of money in the idea that um, that uh, er, a company called Herbalife will fail because he's convinced that the company oh, is a, a pyramid scheme. So the movie is basically his quest to like out uh, Herbalife as a pyramid scheme. So the business will <laughs> fail and he'll recoup a huge amount of profit on his investments. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, anyway, for me, my personal experience is that I was almost recruited by a uh, vector marketing to sell Cutco knives. Uh, that's what happened to me. This is when I was, this is when I was pretty freshly out of college, living at home and desperate to find a job. And they preyed on me because I was weak <laughs> and I didn't know any better. Yeah. I, I think I was on Craigslist or something and I saw an ad for vector marketing and I, you know, responded to the ad and they said, come in for an interview. So here's here's what happened. Hmm. Um, I went, I drove down, I put on like a suit or some shit and I drove down, I'm scared, scared shitless because I really need this. I really fucking need this. <laughs> um, so I go into the, the waiting room, into the, into the lobby in this office building and I wait for my turn and I go in and I, and I talk to this smug, this smug, clean shaven, bald guy. He's like a youngish guy and he's just smirking. He's like, he's real fucking <laughs> confident in himself. And he asks me like, he asks me like some bullshit question. I don't, and, and he gives us all a, pre- he gives everyone in the room a presentation where like, oh, this knife is so sharp it can cut a penny. So you take the knife and you like, ooh, you, you, you cut a penny into a spiral. And like, this is what you're supposed to do. And the idea is that you go around door to door being like, hey, I want to sell you some knives. You go into their home and you cut a penny in front of them. And you're like, ooh, it's so sharp it can cut a penny. And they're like, okay. But the thing is, you got to buy the knives from them uh, to then go yeah. out and sell them. So there's no, they're not, 
hiring you to do anything. You're buying product from them that you will hopefully then go on to resell. So like they profit no matter what, just by bringing you on board. But I didn't realize this. I was so desperate for a job that I was like, this, this is my fucking ticket out of dad yelling at me all the time for being an unemployed <laughs> asshole. So, um, so I was, and I, I'll never forget after the interview went down, I was waiting and the guy comes, he like calls me in his office and he's like, Ben, so after, after talking to you for a while and, and reviewing your credentials, we have decided that yes, you are qualified to work yes. for Vector. And I was like, yes. I was like really relieved. I was like, oh, thank you. I was like, mm -hmm. I'm really grateful. It's embarrassing looking back on it because now I know what was really going on. But I was, yeah. and so I went home and I was like, mom, dad, uh, I'm going to sell knives. And, and looking back, I don't know why that mom and- philosophy, physics uh, degree is really <laughs> paying off now, baby. I, I know, right? And, yeah. and, I, and looking back, I don't know why they didn't be like, Ben, this is a scam. Uh -huh. Like they should have, I don't know why they didn't just do that. But they were like, um, are you sure about this? Are you really sure about this? And I was like, mom, dad, what do you want to do? You're always telling me to get a job. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's a fucking job. What more do you want from me? God. <laughs> but at some point, considering I was like, I got to pay like $160 for this knife set. Like, I can't fucking spare that. And also, it doesn't seem right that I need to buy product to work for a job. So I, I ended up. So like the fact, yeah, my lack of money ended up. My lack of money got me into that situation. But then it also um, um, <laughs> stonewalled me from getting any further into it. So I couldn't go through with it. Um, years later. Uh, I was again jobless and I responded to another ad for some other company. They said they'd give me an interview and mm -hmm. I went to this office building. It, it was a piece of crap in the middle of nowhere underneath. It was underneath a karate dojo. Um, but I, yeah, but I went inside <laughs> and I waited around and it turned out that this interview was not even one on one. It was basically a group presentation and this was not. Um, quite the same. I didn't have to buy in to do this, but basically I would just be selling insurance policies on commission, which is pretty much the same mm -hmm. thing. It's no risk to the company. They're not hiring you for anything. You're just selling their product and they'll give you a cut if you're successful. So it's basically another multi-level marketing thing. But this time I knew what was up. So at the end I was just like, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Peace. And um, that's, uh, that's my fucking story. How about you guys? Well, Ben, that's cool, but I prefer people who succeed at multi-level marketing. I want to hear. I want to hear a champion who's who's yeah. made world the world his bitch. Someone and who really had the hustle. The well, hustle. I, I the mean, hustle to, they need to make it work. Exactly. Like I, to be honest, I I would kind of like to know some insider stories from people who have risen up in the ranks at least a little bit and become that recruiter guy. I, I wonder uh, what that's like. I seri I seriously recommend um mm -hmm. the uh, the not quite fairy tales blog. It is it is horrifying. Like the girl in it, like she does um you know she manages to sell a little bit just from her own like just from her own like get up and go like going around and looking mm -hmm. for it. She becomes like a complete fucking slave drone to this company. Her whole like Facebook and social media presence becomes dedicated to tweeting Jesus about it, Christ. to tweeting about it and tweeting about products, posting selfies of herself talking about how grateful she is to have this job and how wonderful her life is now that she's got this job, even though she's like hundreds of pounds in the hole for the entire time. But mm -hmm. they're just like fake it till you make it, girl. You got to tell people how great this is. <laughs> but like That's so evil. Yeah. It's Jesus. really evil. Well, they're, right. like, they're like fa they're like fake it till you make it but really like they say that under the guise that like show people how great the product is so they'll want to buy it but exactly. no really what they're doing is fake it till you make it tell people how great this job is so they'll be duped into fucking signing on and becoming right. and your you're duping yourself subordinate. into not letting the reality of the situation phase you yeah. yeah, and of yeah. course, of course, she eventually finds out that this like super with it, successful together girl that recruited her, she was just faking until she made it too. Exactly. She wasn't making any money either. Nobody in the chain was making any money. Um, they're all the they're all in the, the hole. The people mm -hmm. that are maintaining their high rankings are literally buying the products for themselves and keeping them keeping their quote unquote business afloat that way. It's um it's a nightmare. Some Eesh. of the most evil shit out there, man. That's that's not how capitalism's supposed to work. It's purely you, parasitic. You succeed you succeed in an MLM by duping people into doing yeah. into falling for the same trick you fell for. Yeah. What, once you yeah. realize that the products won't sell, that's the only way to make it work. So what I want to know is, did did the girl ever cross that cross that evil bridge and become like? I mean, I know that she was advertising it for. Her. Did she ever willingly like acknowledge that like I am now duping people, and you know what? I've got to do it if I want to dig myself out of here. Did she ever get into that place? Um, 
No, not quite. There was this kind of mm-hmm. thing where, like, she got her, like, stepsister to buy some makeup at a kind of a shitty price, and then mm-hmm. she, like, couldn't refund it, even though the girl changed her mind. But she wasn't, like... That's no, not she, so bad. She didn't, like, much. act... She did recruit some people, mm-hmm. but she didn't, like... I don't know. She wasn't too you know, bad. Like, clearly the there are worse is, people. Uh, sure. But the funny thing is, even in a situation where you're doing this, like... Human beings are, are crazy adaptive. You can get yourself in the headspace where you don't think you're doing anything wait, wrong with this stuff. Wait, no, I changed my mind because she did the mm-hmm. fake it till you make it thing and she did recruit people. So yeah, she absolutely duped people. Never mind. She was just as bad as any of the others. Of what, I'm, what I'm wondering is if like, how, uh, we could call these people evil and all that, but I'm wondering if they're not more helpful to think about it that like their perspective has been fucked up and we need to make them have. see the light, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they've been yeah. told by people they think are successful that this is how they did it. And so they're just mm-hmm. following the blueprint that they've been given. Same right. way if you go to right. any job and they're like, this is the way you do it. And then you do it. You have no proof that that works. You just take them at their word. Mm-hmm. That's true. Until you, you learn you, as you go. You until th- you're just th- like, you, wait, they're fucking me over. And then you, mm-hmm. you're screwed. You think it's a legitimate job. And, and like any any talk of like, oh, well, my products aren't selling. This stuff is not good. It's like... That's all like you're being negative. You need to work on your attitude. You need to have a positive <laughs> mind. You need, well, a, you like, need a positive mindset to succeed in this industry. But a positive mindset is just like buy just, everything we tell you to buy. Yeah. You need it's to be all a good that drone. business talk. That, that I feel like there's a whole sect yeah. of human society that is the businessman. And it's so mm-hmm. weird and alien that they yeah, get the, in their heads that the, the, the way to, to succeed is, is to be this way and... I think it's really just dumb people following a blueprint, like he's saying. Like, they don't know what they're doing, but they know that it makes them money, so they just keep doing it until, you know, they get really rich. Like, smart people generally don't go down that road, but when they do, they rise right to the top because they know actually how to do it better. There there are rich people in these pyramid schemes, but they're only at, like, mm-hmm. the very, very top that have, like, just lucked yeah. into a situation what, where they did, have uh, huge networks of people underneath them. What yeah. did Herbalife right, have? Like, right. the president's group or whatever the fuck it was? You got, like, this, like, diamond yeah, and, pin, and they were, like, they did these huge, big presentations where, like, hundreds of people went. They're, like, they showcase these guys, and then it's, like, you just have to keep going. I have, like, 15 sports cards now. Herbalife's the best, yeah! And everybody was, like, mm-hmm. cheering what and I, shit. What I it's all that, this... if I can do it, you can do it. Right. Bunch of what fucking I... bullshit. What's, what's evil about this is that, so, in, like, normal capitalism, the whole idea is you, like, generate a product and you give it to people who, you know, don't have the skills or whatever to make it themselves or, or the time, they've just got other specialties, and then you, you do an equitable trade where you both gain. And that's where... That's where society progresses. I mean, you know, in this kind of system. That's like through that trade, that's where all the great stuff that we have in America has basically come from right. through this process. But like nothing is being created in this system. It's kind of like it's kind of like the banking system. Only that actually lending money does sort the, of allow growth in some areas. The 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 business model of these of these, you know, pyramid schemes that pass themselves off as MLMs by having a mm-hmm. a quote-unquote product that's for sale is that yeah. the the product itself is not anything special and it's overpriced for what it is so it will not sell on its own mm-hmm. the only the but but the structure of the way that you recruit people and then you you incentivize these people like you need to sell you need to sell the stuff at any cost if you're going to make your quote-unquote business work so right. that creates the incentive to buy and to yeah. sell so like the, the products product aren't ha- designed to be bought by end users Users, they're designed to be bought by the people you recruit yeah. so they can sell yeah. them. So the only people buying the products are the people suckered into it. Are the the employ the quote unquote employees. Right. They're they're and the ones with, with the interest in purchasing the products. Any system of, of trade like this that isn't about delivering as high a quality product as possible to the people at a, at a minimum, has its priorities skewed and yeah. is is, the, is evil. It's it's disgusting. Like wat- watching the um in the um betting on zero documentary, they interview the guy who's in charge of Herbalife, which is another company like this that sells like like health health products and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he he's some like he's like an ex Disney executive, right? And but he talks about it, like he talks with such confidence about how like. This business is great because we're bringing like we're bringing these like great products to people like we're providing a we're providing a great service like we're bringing important fucking health benefits to the people and we're you know giving tons of people like an opportunity to make money like we're supporting these communities like the the movie is it's part of it centers on this like this Latina community this Latino community that's like 
a bunch of them have been suckered in. They've been like tricked into buying these like franchises of Herbalife, mm-hmm. but only for the products not to sell, and they they're ruined and they lose tons of money and it causes tons of problems for them. And they're like protesting this company because like we were duped, in, you know, by promises of success that were not representative of your actual company. And meanwhile, fucking what's his name, the CEO of Herbalife, is like, yes, you know, we love the Latina community. You know, they're part of our, they're part of us. We, I've you know, we were, yeah. we're happy, we're happy to give them this opportunity. But Dude, it's a no, fucking the, sham. The they worst part up of that, that is they have they um they bring the guy who's 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 betting on zero, the guy they follow. They bring him in to have this like meeting with with these people bringing the lawsuit against Herbalife, all the people that got duped, and then Herbalife hires a busload of people to counter protest them during this yeah. meeting. So yeah, there's tons yeah. of Latino people out there with signs saying how great Herbalife is, and they've all been paid to do it to make it look as if. These guys are all full of shit. Uh, on that subject, is Herbalife hiring? Because I could really use some money. I would, totally counter, I would totally counter protest for money. I'm not that dedicated to this cause. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, go on, Tom. Go on. Oh, I was gonna say we're all we're all missing the important question here because we're all morally vacant. We need to. The question we need to ask is how do we make the PCP? Mm-hmm. a pyramid scheme so we can all make tons of money clearly that's the, question. that's the important I like, question here i like i like where your head's at tom <laughs> i like i like where you're going with this. well i'm actually uh the head of a pyramid scheme it's mm-hmm. called it's called my patreon it's called patreon.com slash louis batten the <laughs> way it works <laughs> is uh you patron me and you give me money and then you get other people to join in and the patron and then they can replace the money you're giving me. So you'll you'll be my patron without having to pay. You just need to recruit people to do it for you. And then everybody right. can go <laughs> into my patron uh, Discord chat and they can say, hey, 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 I got in here without paying. And then everyone will be like, like it'll be like, fuck it, sick. And then the people, yeah, and then sick. the people down, the people they recruited are going to be scrambling to find people to to pay for their segment, for their portion yeah. of what they're, you know, yeah, yeah. the word will get out, guys. You know, I, minimum. This isn't quite a a, a pyramid scheme set. I mean, it, it's a pretty far cry from it, really. But like, I, it, it's funny to me to think about the way Patreon sort of works and that it incentivizes creators to like patron each other and then just recirculate money because the the whole deal is like Does people. It? Well, yeah, like there's there's a big culture of like, ooh, go out and patron everybody, keep forwarding money to your creators. But the thing is, or to the creators that you like as an artist. But the thing is, every time that you patron anyone, Patreon takes their ten percent or their five percent cut or whatever from the money that's being patroned. So if you if you if somebody patrons you a dollar, and then you're like, great, or let, let's say ten dollars, and then you decide to patron somebody five dollars or something. Uh, like and you're using the money that you're making to do that uh like you're just giving patreon the money and no more is actually getting to the creators you yeah. know you know what i'm saying yeah or like if you yeah well it is, that is that weird because like patreon PayPal? gets to like double and triple dip on that because like it's the same yeah. ten dollars but they've taken their cut twice out of the same ten dollars i remember i remember seeing someone's patreon that was like he posted like inspirational quotes and writings and stuff but his model right. was like hmm. My model is like you patron me, I'll patron you, and in no, this, that's the bad. Yeah, that's and in, bad. And in, Don't and in do this it. way, like, our, like it boosts both of us. But like, yeah, the only, only Patreon, the only person that. getting paid in that situation is Patreon itself. Dis- Everyone else, the money just is just the disappearing. Stupidest thing I've ever heard. I I, know, I read this and so I was like, yeah, okay, this guy looks like he's fucking got it because he's got a pretty high Patreon number going. But, but he's but giving like, that all back to the people. But he's that's yeah, why. just it's that's a so fucking dumb. sham. That's why I make a point of not patroning people as a person who gets money from Patreon. I patron I just, you, hippo. Oh, I that uh, thanks. Because I, I love I, like, you. Like, I, I and just, you deserve I just it. Don't, uh, thanks. Oh, oh no, <laughs> yeah. no, no! I'm gonna <laughs> now back myself into a corner with all this praise. I don't know what to do. Yeah, but I'm with you though. I have never patroned anyone, and will never, because I would much rather just PayPal the money directly if I was inclined to That's do so. That's true. Yeah, yeah. PayPal is mm-hmm. is a better for that. Although yep. for me to you, it would it would still lose money because of the the country difference. PayPal that, PayPal's that PayPal's recurring payment function is it would be a superior alternative to Patreon, mm-hmm. but nobody wants to do it, and right. and it's, I kind of. Not... The, the, the masses don't... need their centralized platform in order to make yeah, up for the fact do. that they have no brains. <laughs> I don't really blame them. I mean, it I do. just doesn't, I mean, it just doesn't have that. I don't know. Like I can't put my finger on it, but there's something, 
more friendly about doing it through Patreon than there about. Totally is, I mean, because the, it's, it's, it's made a cultural zeitgeist. Yeah, there's just a there's just a, a culture think, now of doing think, it. Oh, yeah, objectively it is, speaking, it's, it's, the, it's, the PayPal is better, but Patreon just is so much more like appealing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think what it is is that for PayPal, uh, you need to be given a link to and then type in stuff. For Patreon, you go there and you have an account and you just press a button, really. Yeah. Like it's 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 although it's just that is one of simpler. the downsides. It's, like, it's not to pay- that much oh, simpler, but it's simpler enough that people would do it over PayPal. And not to mention, it's like a far more customizable thing. I'll, I'll tell you what what PayPal needs to do. PayPal needs to get in this game. So I can stop giving Patreon, you know, like I lose like a 10% cut of everything I made through through the combination of like uh, money being transferred to like the like the uh, like the credit card people who like process the payments and stuff. And then also Patreon takes their 5% cut. So like everybody loses 10% off that shit. PayPal already has this technology built in for free. They just need to work on their public image and they will now get all the traffic that Patreon gets. They just need they need a PR campaign to step their shit up. Elon Musk, I, I actually know if he still works at PayPal or whatever, but they need to get their shit together and organize this and just make it so that they have a similar platform to what Patreon does with the like customization and the cute memes you can put and the little descriptions and whatnot and your 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 campaign yeah, or whatever. I think, it's, I it think that's better. the True edge. that Patreon edge. needs competition desperately. And I would, yeah, well, really I would welcome it from a corporate monolith like paypal I yeah i kind of want that, them to fucking be squished it's funny because like that's it's exactly like, they could be squeezed problem, though, to improve cause like, themselves because like mm-hmm. pay- paypal is is like a big company they're so like normal mm-hmm. uh patreon has the edge of being like oh we're all into indie art guys we, 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 yeah. you're an aspiring yeah, totally artist you come it. to patreon and and everyone's like oh well i guess i will it's actually um, because funny because like Patreon actually killed the first site to do this because Patreon wasn't the first really? site to be. Yeah, there yeah, was a was, site um, made by Hank Green called Subable, and that's they the one. they were running that for a while. But the thing is, they never got it out of like beta or whatever because like only certain people could mm-hmm. were using could join Subable. Like you had to be chosen for it, and they kept that up for like a year or something. And Patreon just like fuck that. We're gonna do what you did, but let it be open for everybody. And then eventually, well, they, you know, they that's, that's capitalism. I was for you. sad. I was sad about okay. that because I actually liked Subable's model better. Yeah, it was Subable's like the, model was way better. It was the way Sub- that my Patreon is set up, where I give rewards based on total patronage, not on like right. monthly amounts. Right, so, like right. when you donated money to Subable, it like built up like your bank, and then you could spend the money in like lump sums to get rewards instead of like having like monthly things so yeah, like if you had a way reward that was like a hundred dollars and you pledge five dollars a month once you pledge a hundred dollars total then you could unlock that reward and claim it that's good that's good so but they they got killed because they didn't develop a site fast enough that's and the market baby and uh I, I assume you guys know about the little bit of controversy that's been going on about patreon demonetizing or, or you know yes. shutting down the accounts now mm-hmm. there, there's a lot of sides to that and we don't need to go into it too much but i was actually pretty Pretty, pretty convinced by the arguments that Mr. Patreon Man made in the in the video that he made. And he did like an interview with uh, with Dave I did, Rubin. I did watch stuff. the interview that he did with Dave Rubin, and mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. it was it was. I felt like I was concerned by the fact that he just said like a lot of the situations. Like I don't know what I would do. I'm like, dude, you wrote the rules. Yeah, you he, should know. You're the guy. You're the guy, yeah. dude. What? Who am I supposed to ask these questions to? The thing is, is though, like people were saying, because like it was Lauren Southern who got demonetized, and she's like a, a right, right wing right. political commentator, and people mm-hmm. were like pissed off. Like this is a political thing. But if you look at like the history of Patreon, like banning people, they've also banned like you know Antifa things and like left wing stuff too. So it is like they are sticking to yeah. their 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 terms of service or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But it still is like a bad you know precedent what? I, to I set. Have a concern I guess about this. I, I have a thought about this. I've been thinking about it for a while, and I only recently was able to to articulate it clearly. So let me tell you. Let, let me ask you guys, what do you think about this? So so common these days. When someone is like, let, let's just say, like, when, when Sargon of Akkad, for example, got kicked off of Twitter, as it was recently, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like, people... people Good yeah, riddance. Uh, fair enough. It doesn't matter how you feel about him. But the point is, as he's kicked off, the people, like, uh, he, his side of the argument says, like, oh, uh, you know, that's not fair. This is shutting down free speech. You know, I mean, not everybody's making that point. And, like, he would acknowledge, like, Twitter's a private company. Uh, but, but that's the thing. The other side would then say... Uh, the, you know, the leftists who are happy that he's gone. No, uh, Twitter is a private company. They can do whatever they want, dude. You just have to deal with it. This is, you know, fuck off. Uh, and so, okay, so that's a fair argument. But here's what I'm wondering about that situation. So as time goes on more and more, these companies like Twitter are the ways that we actually right. communicate in the real world. Like this, this is becoming like just the public marketplace well, of dude, ideas it's like as opposed to gathering in the town square. A or better example for this is like Twitter is yeah. bad enough, but like Google Google yeah, is super yeah. politically motivated at this point. And like 
That's been made clear. Google essentially is a public utility at this point. Like you can't function yeah. without yeah. using their services. So like if not like legally from an eth- raw ethical standpoint, they should be apolitical and not m- mingle in that at all. Despite the fact that they're a pub, a, a private company. Like there's like, uh, you know, just recently when I watched the interview with Mr. Patreon, man, uh, there was like, he talked about how Patreon exists to cultivate a certain culture. And you know, he was big Jack and his dick about like, no, we're creators. We're the right. creators place. And like, he was like, so for example, you cannot sponsor like a porn thing on Patreon. Like that's against our terms of service. And I was like, hang on. I know people right now who have Patreons that are about porn and are, you know, like th- that's what they do. So where's the, I, I didn't even I guess think that was just the case. Like, I, I think he just means like actual pornography. Cause you can like draw porn. I think they're fine with that. I am pretty okay. sure I'm pretty sure I am aware of uh like like mm-hmm. models and like yeah there are definitely like, like cam like girls f- and stuff on Patreon yeah. for and sure like photographers yeah. And, yeah. and like you know erotic photography that is definitely being funded through Patreon at least as far as I am aware I have definitely seen such things I before mean, maybe they've been shut but, down but some people would argue uh-huh. there's a difference but I think that's bullshit I think like at that point. Mm-hmm. Like, well, there's no difference between porn and, like, 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 like why girls. J- like, Jessica Nagiri, for example, has a gigantic Patreon, one of the biggest, and I only watch her to jack off. That's what I do. That's, that's what her content is for. So I don't know what other utility it has. So, I like, that seems like a pretty yeah, clear case. I don't know. At least... I d- I just think yeah. it's dumb to ban porn entirely. I think I think it's mm-hmm. it's as valid an I expression mean, as anything else. I don't else. think they would, well, that's, because that would, that's, like, I, I, I'm just guessing, but that's probably a huge amount of Patreon's income. Is like various porn things. Oh, I'm sure and it is. Furry no, oh yeah, like what's her that. face? Like that girl who makes like the who, Sakimi who's that girl Chan. Does the incri- Sakimi Chan. That's exactly what I'm thinking of. Yes, her. her. Every time I think about her, I just want to kill myself. A little she makes bit what more. like fifty grand a month or something. It's like she makes she makes over six figures a year, like easily. Well, at this point, there's a decent amount of page. Okay, but but the, the point I wanted to get to about this was like. Yeah, it's basically this issue of um, uh, like it being it being treated as a public utility. Like right now, there's this whole thing about net neutrality going on right now, um, and I, I actually don't know the status of it right now. I, I don't think anything's changed uh, at the moment. But but the the point is that like we're trying to make the internet be t- be treated as like again a public utility like the phones are. So right now, uh, AT and T cannot say, "Hey, uh, we heard that you were talking about uh, big gay dicks." on the phone, so we're shutting down your account because we are a good Christian company and we don't want that shit on our fucking airwaves. Uh, well, like, so actually, they can't do that. You can, you can technically do that. I mean, what that's mean? happening right now. Uh, uh, is like, that so? Uh, because in in the aftermath of Charlottesville and stuff, like, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, have you ever heard of the Daily Stormer? It's like a Nazi website. Yes. The, yes. um, they were reporting on that and, like, everyone got pissed off about Nazis and so... The, the company that hosted the Daily Stormer pulled the site because they're like, we don't support this on our platform. So they pulled yeah. the entire site, even though they weren't technically doing anything illegal. Uh, they took it down and then they went to Google to host it there. And Google's like, fuck you. So now the site's gone. And, so and that's – yeah, that that's a great example. That's exactly the same sort of issue here. Like that's – that is a private hosting company deciding we don't want to host it. But then – like for political reasons, nobody wants to host it, and so right. there's a denial so of service it's gone. going on. Like you're, it's it's censorship by by you know by virtue of what it is. If nobody the question though is is this is this unfair or is this fair? I don't know how we got here from fucking pyramid schemes, but <laughs> we're here we are, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I was I was just gonna say we ventured pretty far afield by now. We have. But uh, I, st- I still want to get back at some point to turning the PCP into a pyramid scheme. It's I think a very we can important do- topic. To I think okay. we can do it okay. if we put our heads together. Okay. Should we, okay. Let's let's think about this. Uh, so, all right. Uh, well, we just well, we is, the product, is, well, is the product joining the PCP? I've got. Mm-hmm. Hang on. I've got it. Everybody. Okay. Our the product that we're selling is podcasts on the PCP channel. What we do is we outsource people like uh, 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 templates of like images or maybe like the theme song or whatever. We give them assets to make their own oh, podcast. God. This sounds with. like React World. I was just gonna uh, say exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's where I'm going with this. And so we, we, this is sort of a licensing deal for us. We give them people that they make their podcasts and then they make money on them, but they have to pay us a royalty for the usage of that shit and. And, uh, and and there you go. That I, actually I sounds like a great scheme. idea, and I no longer hate React World because I see that they were actually <laughs> geniuses, and we need to get in on it. We need to succeed where they failed. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> they were visionaries. Uh, we need to we need to corner the market on actual liter- literal PCP and add that <laughs> to our podcast. Yeah, we, you're we're, right. We're, you're we're right. starting a multi-level marketing uh, a corporation. Um, we need selling people on drugs. the streets. 
The yeah, PCP is brought to you by PCP. Guys, we've we, we've this is embarrassing. We've gotten away from our roots. We need to get back to gallons of PCP, uh, you know, and whatnot. Th- think about it like this: just just find five people to sell drugs for you, and each of them finds five yeah. people to sell drugs for them. By the time <laughs> you go down two two steps, you're you're fucking Walter White. Only you don't die at the end. Spoilers for Breaking Bad. Yes, spoilers. Um, Everything works out great for you forever. There's no problems. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Well, I'm down. Where can, no, just good. where where can we find drugs? <laughs> we just gotta hit up my boys. S- someone at, uh, send Los send Locos. send someone send best guy ever's uh, PO box some drugs and we'll start <laughs> distributing. <laughs> them no, we can't we can't do that because then we're in their pyramid scheme because we're relying on them for the drugs. We can't that that'll fuck well, it all obvious, up. Well, obviously, obviously, uh, we we're gonna start drugs, with we gonna start drugs from ourselves. We're gonna yes, start yes. with donations. Like our initial our initial uh, source of capital will be will be <laughs> donations. <laughs> mm-hmm. Donate drugs to the PCP pyramid scheme. Uh, hashtag PC pyramid scheme. Um, uh, find five people who will tweet it for you, um, and then they'll find five people who tweet it for them, and on and on. Um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, fire dude. Uh, here, here's how it works. Uh, here, here's what you have to do. Uh, okay. Hashtag uh, PC pyramid scheme, and then mm, tag yes. tag five of your friends, and they have to tag five of their friends, and eventually, uh, hashtag Ooh, yeah. PC pyramid scheme will be will be a global f- worldwide phenomenon and everybody That's will be it. saying what the fuck is this this is not a joke everybody this is real this is real everybody go hashtag PC pyramid scheme tag five of your friends and keep it going forever uh, I'm, let's, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna do yeah. it right now actually good all right let's let's get it rolling the people won't know for a week uh what the fuck you're talking about but uh <laughs> yeah, well, we'll just the day it airs no that's right that's right i'm okay i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait until the day this airs and then i'll do good it. thinking good yeah. thinking yes we'll, well all do it then you should just Here schedule we- the tweet so as soon as it goes up it posts and then you're can, you're fucking ready can, yeah. can you can you schedule a tweet you have to be able to I, I there's think, no way you can't I schedule so I've never uh, heard of such. Is Twitter that shitty? I've never needed to do it, but you, now you that can if, schedule if, a word. There's no. I've thing. never heard of anyone scheduling a tweet. Oh my god! You can Twitter schedule really a Patreon post. Was that good? Was that good? You can sh- you can schedule a Patreon post. You can yeah. do that. Yeah. God, uh, Twitter sucks. Okay, hey, I here's think... what you can do. If if you have to do a workaround, you can uh, have a video on YouTube. You can schedule that video, and then you can associate a tweet with that, it that to tweet true. that video. That's so you can use that at worst case scenario. You could do that. What if, wait, Best what if we scenario. made, what if we said, um, make a, make a fucking, make a fucking YouTube video that's, uh, just, just the text, hashtag PC pyramid scheme. It'll be like an ARG. No one Ooh. will know, like, just like a storm of videos hits, starts hitting YouTube. Uh, <laughs> just ha- and, uh, you know, tag, wait, can you tag people on YouTube? You can't, can you? No, you can't. You can oh, put, shit. you can put their Twitter name in the title and when it tweets it out, they'll get hat mentioned on Twitter. Oh, okay. That's something. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Devious. Um, <laughs> All right, you, you know you can choose. You can choose. Uh, you can choose whether you want to be a silver member um, who's just who's mm-hmm. just tweeting, or if you want to be a gold member and be a member of the of the PC uh, Presidents Club hashtag yeah. PC Presidents Club. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you you make make a video and tweet the, the, it and the tag PC, people PC. who are gonna make video responses, and they gotta tag five more. Yeah, this we're gonna be brilliant. rich guys. <laughs> Where does the money come from exactly in this? Um, uh... I, it, it, it'll it'll come. It'll come. It'll, 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 it'll no, the money's gonna in. come from drugs. Like once everyone's excited about PC pyramid scheme, then we start selling drugs, selling right. crack cocaine to kids. Everybody will be on drugs, and everybody will be asking, "What is hashtag PC pyramid scheme?" They're gonna look us up. They're gonna uh, they're gonna say, "Oh, I love this podcast." They're gonna go yes. on the Patreon. They're gonna go uh, pay um, loads of money, and uh, that's how we're gonna grow as a channel. Oh, and, we should just, and, we should just um, make a reward it, tier that is the PC Presidents Club. So when everyone hears this one, they'll be. Oh, be that's a good idea. Include, include, uh, include um at TP Crastinators in your uh, in your PC Pyramid Schemes tweet. Yes, please. please. Yes. Well, it, it'll have the hashtag PC Pyramid Scheme, so we yeah, can, we can search we can for, search for that. That's, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I just meant so people. I just meant so people would know that it's this is our this is our scam, and um, and we're the ones oh, that they're yes. harder. Oh, no, we, no. we can get immediately arrested when they figure out what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is good. This is good. I like this. I I, I like where our heads at, gentlemen. I think right. we've got big things coming to us. Um, is that it? Oh wait, wait, <laughs> yeah. no, no. You gotta link our Patreon. You gotta link every. We we, we don't have to go viral. 
Oh want, yeah, of course. This, oh, and, and make and make sure to fake it till you make it. Tweet tweet hashtag PC Pyramid. <laughs> tweet hashtag PC Pyramid scheme and talk about and talk about how now that you now that you watch the PCP, uh, now that you're getting all these sweet bonus episodes through our Patreon, yes. Yes. your um your 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 life is so much better. Uh, you're being paid. You're being paid every fucking minute so, of every day. So are we are we rebranding re- the bonus episode oh. here as the PC Presidents Club? Is that what's happening right That'll now? That'll be the sub name. That's, that's a <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got it. I've got it. Uh, the you're being paid in attention. We're gonna pay attention to your tweets. That's yes. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta find that'll, five that'll people who em. will pay you attention, and then they'll find right. five people who will pay them attention. Uh, yeah, that's, it's that's brilliant. It's that's yeah. brilliant. It's it's gonna work, guys. What we're selling, what we're selling, what we're selling in this multi-level marketing company is mindshare in the public zeitgeist. That's right. That's right. We're, we're because selling. In this, that's our current age of social media. What is more valuable than attention? Not money. Not, I'll tell you that not, much. Not a damn yeah. thing. Not a damn yeah. thing. We'll, we'll pay you an exposure. It's 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 totally <laughs> way down. Oh with this yeah. Shit. <laughs> the basic, this whole this whole scheme is just it's just it's like the exposure is just traveling up the line. Just tra- <laughs> yeah. just like more exposure being paid to your upline and they're paying their upline and honestly. And on and on until it all reaches us and we become legendary viral superheroes fantastic that's the end goal but don't tell anyone <laughs> we're doing we're, we're this we're, we're gonna pretend we're doing a public service but we won't say what that service is the pc public service pc yes. pu- hashtag all... pc public service <laughs> <laughs> the pcps we got the pcpc the pcps what else uh the, the, the uh, pc pcd the pcbe i don't know these, uh, these are yeah. all the sacred words of our viral marketing campaigns yes. words yes. of power <laughs> attack kill destroy die, die. <laughs> these words used by an elite group of online hackers yeah, known okay, as the right. pcp <laughs> 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 okay all right uh so well, there you go we, we've rolled out our whole our whole operation everybody. we've really we've really you, uh... made a lot of progress we banged out a whole business model in what like 40 minutes yes yeah yeah and it's, it's not easy. a joke it's not a joke you have to do it if you're watching yeah. this you i'm have gonna to go to do Twitter. this when this fucking video goes live of course this instantly. video will, will be tweeted with the hashtag pc pyramid scheme oh good. The, the hashtag oh, good. should be edited into the video covering most of the information <laughs> <laughs> this is the Agreed. first video of the gold tier is is making a video with yeah. hashtag pc pyramid scheme yeah this yeah is the, uh, the publicly available one to 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 get him in to get him yeah. on board yeah yeah give him a taste show show everyone how much better your, your lives can be with uh with hashtag pc pyramid scheme in your life all right. Well, with that said, uh, I feel like we're good. Let's. How about we go over to questions yeah. now? I think we're all set. Uh, any any final points to make about pyramid schemes in general? Uh, don't uh, do them. <laughs> 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 not re- not recommended. Oh, I, uh, I did just want to say that my only exposure to one was uh, in. Um, uh, uh, the uh, welcome to the NHK. Welcome to the NHK. Or I, oh, there was a Simpsons one too. But when uh, that lady. Uh, was doing it and it looked real spooky. Uh, so don't do it. It's not good. Oh, and Sato, like the main character, bought into him. Yeah, they're really sad. The way they prey on like vulnerable, weak people is like the most evil thing in the world. So yeah, don't. Uh, so remember, I've... all of our audience, please hash- tweet the hashtag yeah, PC exactly. Pyramid Scheme. <laughs> That's what I'm you saying. Are, you're not you're weak really and vulnerable at Wait, all. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, I changed my mind. Do them. Do them. Do them all. Start. <laughs> start now. Start while you're young. <laughs> oh, well, that's what makes ours special. Ours is the one that's not like that. Ours yeah, is and, really and, good. And remember, it's multi-level marketing. It's not a pyramid scheme. Hashtag PC pyramid scheme. Yeah. <laughs> That's I what they do, by you... the way. The, 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 oh, yeah. the, the biggest repeated phrase in MLM is like, it's not a pyramid scheme. Pyramid schemes are illegal. And what we're doing is legal. So clearly it's not a pyramid scheme, guys. That's our quote. That's our, that's our, um, our mm-hmm. catchphrase. That's our story and we're sticking to it. <laughs> Hashtag not illegal. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, Gabe, were you saying something about this? Uh, only that I've never seen a human being do this in my life. Mm-hmm. I've only ever heard about it. I mean, no I've... one's ever approached me to say, uh, "Please buy some matches or something." I, I one there was a traumatic event in my life that was directly related to a pyramid scheme. So I was at a football game, and there were a bunch of cheerleaders, and they started climbing on each other's shoulders, and it was it got more horrible. It just they all <laughs> they they formed this triangular shape right in front Jesus of me. Oh Christ. God, I couldn't fucking deal with it. Yeah, I, I lost. What a my fucking shit. scam! There was what there a was a time scheme. It was it wasn't <laughs> those it crafty was... sluts. I hate them. How they dare were scheming they? Yeah. to make that pyramid. That's for they sure. They were. They really were. They had were. designs. 
<laughs> uh, it wasn't a pyramid scheme per se, but there was another time that I got called by a company that wanted me to come and listen to a pitch for a fucking timeshare. You guys know uh, about yeah. timeshares? A little yes. bit. You, you sort of you buy property and then rent it to other people is the gist, I, right? I think the idea is that you're renting a property, but you're renting it collectively with like other people. Oh, okay. So you're so you're paying rent on this you're paying rent on this property, but you're only paying for it for like you know like a, one month out of the year or something like that. So like so, you you make money from this, or is it just for your enjoyment? No, I I, <laughs> I think you're maybe supposed to. Uh, I, th- I, just, I don't know. I really like kind of to, I'd, I'd really like to rent that house. I can't live in it, but you know that'll be the, fun. The pitch it's got to be a money thing. It's got. It's, it's, no, that, the, for the person owning that property, that sounds amazing because you can definitely charge more than just regular rent. Yeah. And then sure, you get it from sure. 12 different people. You're like making twice normal rent on the property you own. Oh my God. People with money are so privileged. I hate them all. The people pitch, with money are so dumb. What are they the pitch doing? For, the pitch for timeshares is like, uh, like imagine being able to say, I've got a little place in the Swiss Alps. Cause like for one month yeah, out of the year, you, so yeah. you can oh. go on like holiday for one month. and like, Just lie. Yeah. Or whatever. Just I lie guess it makes about sense. It. You can just lie. You can just lie. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, you don't have to buy it to say that. Nobody said you have to. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, but you I got to fly to the fucking Swiss Alps. No. I'm just gonna but say I got but shit. I got called by a timeshare company and like they were they gave me this song and dance about like, "Oh, we've got a big opportunity for you." And at some point I realized it was a timeshare. It so I was like, I was wise. So they were like, "So, will will you be attending?" And I was like, "I'm going to fuck these guys." And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, reserve that chair for me, guys. Make <laughs> make sure oh, nobody you, you... Make sure not to extend this invitation to anyone else. I'm going to be there. But you I think monster. But you, I think they you knew. You master puppeteer you. <laughs> no, I think they could tell from my tone cuz the late cuz my tone changed and the lady started being uh. like, "Um, so and I was like, "Yep, I'm I'm going to be there." I'm cuz I went from I went from skeptical to like full-on enthusiasm and I think she knew something was off. Right. But yep. I did my yep. but I did my best. I I own an entire tectonic plate guys <laughs> <laughs> come visit for, for for one for, for in the middle of the pacific ocean for one sixteenth of a second out of each year i own the <laughs> continent of australia yes excellent <laughs> you're, you're the king all right let's uh let's go to our questions everybody let's okay here we go um Sweet. Uh, okay. Here's here's one that I don't understand why it's here. At Meaty Learner five oh nine asks, on average, how many times does best guy ever say? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. On average, how many times per day does best guy ever say? Haha. Well, all right. <laughs> That's <laughs> pretty co- pretty much constantly. I don't. Do I say that? Is that like a I um, don't. You just I mean, said it right now. I, it's true. <laughs> that <laughs> well, definitely right. sounds like the kind <laughs> of thing you say. It's, this, I, the, the, the number of has is very specific. <laughs> yeah, only two. You can't have more than that. Uh, I would give it 20, 20 times per day. That seems reasonable. Uh, oh, is somebody checking the uh, the, the patron one for, for questions? Oh, these are from the Twitter, obviously. Um, I, I actually see a good one here from our, at okay. ourettes underscore, mm-hmm. who asks, what the fuck constitutes a good question? Hey, that is an excellent question. That we yeah, so there you go. Just be like, just ask this question and uh, you're safe. <laughs> Yep, there you go. That's the answer to that one. Um, a good a good question uh, f- is not some meme shit. Like, a good question, like, actually demands some, like, discussion to come to an answer. Uh, uh, a, good, a good question is something that, like, one or more of us is actually interested in addressing. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And also, uh, nothing ever to do with favorites. Yeah. Like, uh, basically... Uh, Basically, a good question is a question that we couldn't answer on Twitter itself. It has to be more than 140 characters requiring the answer. So we can actually get into it and actually think a little bit as opposed to just being like, what's your favorite anime? That's a, yeah, that's I, I got to say that what's your favorite anime is the worst question. It is the worst question <laughs> that, that you can possibly ask. Uh, like a lot of people ask questions that are like the meme that currently makes them giggle. Let's ask about that. Like, yeah. I mean, someone tweeted here, like death grips is online. Like, I know that's a meme going on right now and I know yeah. death grips are cool and all. Uh, I guess that one's a little bit better cause it is kind of like a, but what are, but what are happening. we supposed to, what are we supposed to say about that? Exactly. That's what makes it a, a yeah. Not... if the punchline is the question instead of the answer, then you fucked up. Yeah. Th- I would yeah. say that's fair. But then again, there are exceptions to everything. So if you just have like a genius idea, then shoot it out. But you know, it's, yeah. it better be a genius, or I'm just gonna yeah. fucking. You, you, can, you can take that risk if you want, but you you risk public ridicule. 
for mm, everyone indeed. to hear. So <laughs> indeed, <laughs> step forward, brave soul. Well, here here's a kind of a question by Fado on the uh, Fado on the Patron Lounge. Mm. Uh, is there a difference between favorite and best? Absolutely, totally. Uh, no, some people say there isn't, but I've always disagreed with that. I think that if you wait, I I feel like deja vu. I feel like I argued this a long time ago vehemently and was furious about it for weeks. I think but that's I don't, true. I think, but that's I don't true. remember when. But my <laughs> position, my position on this is that if you think something, if something is your favorite, that means that to you it is the best. So like, to 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 be like. Oh, well, this thing is my, like, I, like, to me, this is the best, but, like, I really, it's not the best. Like, the best is this other thing because other people see it this way. Like, that's bullshit. Like, that's just being fucking dishonest. Is that true across all categories? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't think it's true across categories where it's dealing with, like, uh, like, um, observable facts and figures and stuff. Okay, okay. Which is, which is, if you're you're talking about, if you're talking about, like, I don't know, some medicine or something, and maybe, like, some medicine in, like, 90% of cases has no adverse side effects and is great, but to you it has adverse side effects. Like, sure. You can be like, yeah, like, well, this doesn't work for me. Like, like, to me, this other medicine is better. But in, but, okay, but if we're talking, if we're talking about statistical something, If we're talking about art. But if we're talking about art and opinions i think it's really disingenuous to be like this one's my favorite but i think this one is better but not for me like yeah i whatever. don't i agree with ben on this I... with, with, with regards to art i feel like there's no sp- like, like 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 think who, of, a, think who of an example to... where it would not sound weird like who I are you to who are, who are you to speak on behalf of the general population? No, you can only speak but for yourself you on these that. matters. You you can okay. Like uh, if there's a show that you like because you were a kid and you really liked it, and so you have like a personal attachment to it. But as you've got older, like for me, the Bible Black English dub is horrendous, but I love it. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Uh, uh, it's like, it's like the best dub ever to me, even though there are dubs like, I don't know, Bacchano or whatever that are like technically wonderful, but like, I like the Bible black dub cause it's so fucked up and retarded. Like it's clear which of those is better, but I like the Bible black one cause it's got this, you know, special thing that I like about it. What, what about that mm. business? Well, you, the, the, I mean, it's one thing to recognize that more people like another thing than, mm-hmm. than your favorite thing, but like, what's the point of being like, okay, think, well, well, this one's my favorite, but this other one that other people like, that one's technically better. Like, what's the fucking okay, point? Okay, we have to I, define the word best. Like we have to define the word best. Personal preference. Those are two different things. Which I think. Is, again, I think, why if, I think instead of saying and your favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, those are those are two different things. I, but like, I why think, would you use? Why would you, so you you gotta fucking specify? Okay, hang on. All or, right, yeah, what I, are you saying? Mm-hmm. I think the way it should be is that because like a lot of people, us included, say, "Oh man, that's the best thing I've ever seen." Mm-hmm. And we don't actually mean like best. We're not thinking of it like that. We're just saying, right, "I really, right. really like it." Right. It's um. So, I feel like if you're talking, if you're going to say, uh, "This is what's considered the best," you just say, "This is the consensus masterpiece. This is a consensus favorite." And, and but this one's the best. This because you're trying to convince people usually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, okay, I, I feel like I feel like best and favorite are interchangeable. I see nowadays. I think, we, I think we all understand what the word favorite means. It's just like the the thing that you get the most enjoyment out of, you like the most. If we're just talking about art, you know, as, as one subcategory. But I think we need to define the word best. I think that's ex- entirely where the problem lies in this discussion. So what do we actually mean when we say best here? Like. The Guy one that ever. the most people like? Yeah, me. Uh, but is it the one that the most people like, as in it's like, it's got the on average highest score, or is it the most technically proficient? I think, that, like, I think the scientists would say, this is the most perfectly crafted I mean, thing. Scores, I think the best would be techni- like... technical proficiency. Okay. You know, like, this is the best art, like, the most, like, technically I think, proficient, I think, whatever, uh, yeah, versus yeah. my favorite there's, style. There's, like, there's like, like, tiers. There's, like, mm-hmm. very obvious tiers um, within which there's, like, very, you know, like, there's there's stuff that's, like, really well done, but it's, uh, what's the best? Uh, it comes a lot down to personal preference, and then there's things whoa, that Whoa, just... you said what's the best comes to personal preference, but isn't best some sort of objective All right, I'm... thing? Let's see, this oh, is the thing, Oh, right? Lord. Okay, okay, What I'm I think... saying is, what I'm saying okay. is, there are, say, video games, there are games that are just broken and don't work, and yeah. nobody likes yeah. them, and uh, then there are games that are, uh, you know really really good but nobody not a single like there's no consensus on what is the best so the word best is kind of meaningless and it's interchangeable Mm. with favorite when you're saying like what's the best of a series of games that are all uh, brilliant like nobody will ever Mm -hmm. agree so best and favorite will be interchangeable in that situation 
But if you're comparing like okay. um, something that just doesn't work with something that is really good, then there is a clear usage of well, this is better. I guess I guess my my perspective on it has always been that the be- best is referring to technical, measurable, quant like aspects of a work, and favorite is just like emotional, like how you feel. I think that's the only thing that, that makes sense. I don't I don't think it makes sense to judge art you based on technical use, proficiency. Use best as a substitute for favorite. Well, but... I think the, the the way it is is like the, the 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 closer you get to the um the the mythical best thing. Um, the less useful the word best becomes because people mm, stop agreeing so with each I other. Think, I think using the word best to describe an opinion is worthless because it doesn't mean anything. But if you're talking about and, best in terms of a quantifiable aspect, it totally makes sense. And, and how do we deal with the issue of ironic enjoyment of things? Like my Bible Black Dub, that's like my favorite. Like I like that basically, ironically, it was not intended to be good, but it is good. And like the room and shit, like that's a whole... Like best versus favorites when you consider that shit. Well, like those are on the opposite people, side of the spectrum. People, people still use the word best when they say, "Oh, it's the best worst thing ever." I would say the, the room best... is like, but but if I like the room as like my favorite movie, which it is one of, and I uh, then like it totally would not be even close to like the best movie ever made, but it is among my favorites. I what, think like, that if, how do you, if you get that. I think that even if you're enjoying something ironically, if you're getting the most enjoyment out of it, out of all the things, then yeah, it's your it should be your favorite thing. That so even if it like accidentally became entertaining and good, like the room, then like it still it still is what it is, and you can judge it by like I yeah, really, this thing is good. I really think that mm-hmm. it all just comes down to how much enjoyment do I get out of this thing, and yeah. like looking at it from like oh well, what's technically the best? What's that, what's most like, popular? The, the... I think those things are like. I don't see the point in evaluating a work's I, when somebody, merits when on those When somebody has, uh, uh, when somebody has a best, and they say it's the best technically, I I don't feel anything from their recommendation because it's not their favorite. I it, 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 I think what what it comes down to is that the the technical best is kind of useless for me because I don't get the sense that, like I don't know what they mean. Hmm. I don't know. It's 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 hard to explain. I, I had a point. Oh, I think I had I a see point what you're with saying. that. Yeah, like yeah, best. Uh, if you're if you're talking about art, what's the point of knowing which is the best? Wouldn't you rather know someone's favorite? Because like that's the one they actually liked more. So you know what? Who fucking yeah. cares what's the best art? I mean, I, I see where that's coming from. I just I just don't think the word makes any sense if it doesn't mean yeah, what but, Tom was saying it means, and it's like some sort of technical. Yeah, but the thing is, people people just use it like that. Yeah, like, I think I think people use changes. the word best incorrectly all the time because sure. I don't think yeah. the best talks about subjective opinion. I, I think mean, eventually, yeah, best yeah. is going to mean favorite because of the way people are continually using it wrong. Right, because yeah, basically yeah. the moral of the story is everyone's fucking retarded except for us. The moral of the story to me is that language is way too fucking imprecise and it's incredibly frustrating because the whole point of our argument here is that we don't agree on what the words mean. And if we did... This is, this is why. Yeah. This is why language has to be replaced with hip thrusts and, and, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and funny poses. That's, that's the only real language. <laughs> Whoa, funny poses. Is that a JoJo reference, dude? Whoa! Oh, what the yes. fuck is that? It's a meme. I don't know. I was thinking I of don't Dragon get Ball it. Z. It's, uh, people, people will get it. They'll Ginyu know. Ginyu Force. They'll know. Um, oh, those are cool. good. Those are good guys. Would you want to na- pick another question? So I think. Oh, we've, right. I forgot. I think, we, I think we've th- th- run this <laughs> one into the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, that's an example of a good question. Yeah, yeah, it was. That, yeah, that was. In, incites debate because exactly. it's like, who can who can know the truth? Hey, here, here, here's a question from uh, at uh, on Twitter at Lampros from Gr. Yeah, okay. Uh, asks, uh, do you like horror fl- films? If yes, any expectations for the upcoming movie? It. I do not really it like horror sucks. films. So, Did you see uh, it, Kip? Uh, yeah. No, I just wanted to say it sucks oh, it's funny. oh I mean, it's, make a it's video not, with as the title it's not out yet so uh i think it is I will believe it too a couple so. people i, I follow on twitter saw it and they said it was amazing oh Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Well, they said what it was I amazing, care? did they? Huh? Yeah, they said hmm. it was like any the, the general consensus from what i can tell is that's the best stephen king adaptation are you kidding? Ooh. I just saw the dark tower dude and that was a 10 <laughs> out of 10. I didn't actually see it. Um, uh I have no fa- I I don't care about horror really. It scares me. Yeah, I and also a it's fan I, at it's all. either scary or boring. Oh, okay. Well, dude, that's the thing. Okay, so I, I, wait, I hated I, horror for a million years until I played Silent Hill 2 and 3. And now I have found myself well, well, uh, I, wanting games more. Games are different. Games are different because, uh, mm-hmm. uh, like, I, I love Resident Evil 1 on PlayStation. 
Uh, I I haven't played any other versions. Uh, <laughs> you know, sure, I, I'm sure it is, but like it's it's just like the fact that I can. I haven't played it, Resident Evil. Actually. Nothing will happen unless no, I push said forward. Better, and I'm just so arguing that best and better only uh, means technical uh, things. You see, fucking see, peasant. Nate, you fool. Uh, uh -huh. Like 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 the thing with a game, a horror game, is uh, it's all down to you. You have to push forward. Yeah, sort when, of. When, when, in a, like 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 in a movie, when somebody when somebody's about to open a thing, and you and you tense up and you say, "No, don't go in there." You are the guy who is not going to go in there, but okay, you have to okay. do it to con to con it, It's like the tension is so much higher because you have to do it. Oh, right, it is. Yeah, oh, you're right. You're right. It That's makes why me jump. Silent Hill is so fucking. Spooky Horror works and way shit. better in games than it does in movies, for sure. You know, because yeah. then it's, it's about you. It's happening to you. I just watched um, It Follows the other day, which I thought was, it was like more artsy than it was like horrific, though it was pretty scary. Um, yeah, I, I think after I played Sound Hill, like I do have more of a taste for them and I, I'm enjoying them more. I, I said before that I don't like horror movies, but not too mm -hmm. long ago, I watched one called Creep. Have any of you seen it? No, no. Nope. It, Creep, it, it's, it's, it's really great. It's really fucking great. It's not, hmm. there's, it's not some like ghost, some ghost story bullshit. Um, it's not, there's, there's jump scares, but like they are there for a reason and they make sense in the fiction why there would be a jump scare. Okay. And it's, it's, it's really unlike any other, uh, horror movie I've seen before. And it's really fucking good. And it's like, it's like funny too. Like, like the, like the situation is scary and tense, but it's also kind of like funny and absurd in a way. How old is this film? Uh, not less than a decade, I think. Like it's okay, not, okay. it's not recent, but it's not old either. At least I don't mm -hmm. think so. Yeah, I, I highly recommend, uh, Creep. So, um, yeah. But that doesn't say anything about it. I don't care about it. I'm not gonna see it. Oh, I, right. I forgot about it. Um, yeah. I, I had recently watched actually the the entire old like adaptation of the of the old, uh, you know, it adaptation or whatever that had uh, uh, Tim Curry and shit. And uh, I I quite liked that, even though it's been memed on a lot with the, the balloons and the clowns and, uh, you know, all that crazy shit. Uh, I quite liked that. And uh, I was... Definitely not. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it was in the camp of most people thinking like, I mean, I, I'm well known to hate uh, uh, remakes and shit, and that's what this is. So can't say I was really looking forward to it. But I am sort of interested to see because I just like horror movies now. And uh, I don't know, like this guy looks kind of cool. And I'm just curious to see if it does well. And uh, uh, whoever just said that it's been getting good reviews, like that's the first I've heard of its actual quality. So I probably will go see it. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm kind of excited to see it. I just I, I just hate being afraid because I'm constantly afraid of my own inevitable demise. So I don't need to mm -hmm. add to that fear. So I, I agree. G generally, the feeling of being spooked is not a pleasant one that oh, I no, seek out. Not at all. It's creep. It's creep the, didn't spook me. Well, I, I guess it kind of did. I don't know. It was. It, 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 I, the, I didn't mind the feeling it gave me. I like I like the feeling of being spooked where my retarded reaction can entertain other people. Yeah. Like my yeah. Well, like I used to play Resident Evil. Uh, with my brother in the room and you know he would just look at me going ah because he was <laughs> for some reason like like better at, at dealing with it and it was just it was just like the dogs burst through the window and every single time i jumped and i screamed and it was f hilarious and i liked the fact that that was funny hey, and that it was question. like a real it was really nice afterwards wait, wait, wait. like oh phew are you, are you picking another question nate no, no, no. Just I have a question about oh, okay. this topic, and it was just: Were horror films invented to 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 force teenagers to sex each other? Is that what they, you know, you know what I'm saying? You, do, force... do, you, do you mean to force them to sex each other in the films, or to force them to sex no. each other in the theaters? In, in the theater, in the theaters. Is this a, a, a breeding scheme? You know, to, I don't to think make they were spooked. And, I don't think they were you know? invented for that, but they've been co-opted by teenagers, mm -hmm. and we need to we need to take <laughs> them back. We need to wage war. <laughs> I agree. They have. Would you, would you taste. not agree? I mean, I've only watched a few horror films. It's not my thing. But would you not agree that yeah. the PG thirteen rating is the kiss of death for a horror film? I don't um, know it would... enough to say, but it seems that way. Let that me seems... let me look and see what Creep was rated. You know what? I, I actually I just downloaded. Um, uh, fuck. What's the one about? Uh, 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 God, I don't want to say, but it's the one about the black people that came out recently. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, Get out the family. Get, get out. Get out. <laughs> I swear, guys. Uh, it's it's just that's the distinguishing characteristic for the film. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I downloaded that and I've been wanting to watch it. But then I think back to my experience when I'm watching. Um, uh, when I when I was watching. Uh, uh, fuck. It's not. Was it? It follows. Yeah. It was it follows. And like so that movie was good. But then I remember the moment to moment experience of watching it as I'm like wanting to die because like okay so the the scary thing in that movie is like. 
there is a creature, it or whatever, that just it follows you, but it walks very slowly. But the thing is, it can take on the appearance of anyone at any time. So like in a crowd, it could be any of the people there. Uh, and you get it by like having sex with someone who's like it's following currently. It, it doesn't matter. But like, oh, the spooks. Oh, the spooks really got to me. It was, uh, oh, it was painful. Dude, like that's like the dude. pain of watching. But it's the release that comes when you get like you get through it and you're okay and you can reflect yeah, on it. That feels like that. that feels good. I like that. that creep is, a nice creep is rated I, R, although I think it pretty easily could have been a PG thirteen. So mm-hmm. I, I, okay. I had, dude. What if? Because you were saying about ratings, I just had this yeah. idea. What if, uh, just like spicy curries and stuff, mm-hmm. the the spooky things would have a rating system uh, instead of Scoville units or whatever it is, it'll be like Spookville units, <laughs> and how scary it is will be denominated by little little ghost emojis next to the thing. And if it's got be, five, be the you're change in for a you want to see in the world, dude. Lel. <laughs> I I, like I, I would like that. It's <laughs> like it's oh, it's only got two two ghosts on that. On the Spookville rating, that's not <laughs> scary enough for me. Uh, that, that's good. Uh, oh, well, uh, we're basically out of questions on the Twitter. We got any oh, others oh, that's, on the... Oh, uh... that's not true. I'm looking at the Twitter right now, and I want to answer this one from AJ Case 997 okay. uh, You're on a deserted island with one other PCP member. Who do you take, Munchie? <laughs> <laughs> so you no. have to have one to survive. I, I well, well you, what, you're stranded uh, on a PC on, on an island. You get to have one other PCP member with, with you. Who do you take? Munchie. There's Mage. no question. There's no... Yeah? Mage. Mage. I'll fight you. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. You have Munchie. All right, fine. Uh, can I take another of myself? That's, that would be my, <laughs> that would be my ideal asshole. choice. That's what I would take if <laughs> oh, I could. Oh, of course. <laughs> I really am the best boy. Oh my god! I can imagine <laughs> Nate, both Nate, of uh, I can you just jumped the sh- best guy ever. Just jumped the shark. <laughs> I, I forgive me, everyone. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm out of questions on here. Do we have any others to answer in the in the thing? Oh, he's um, terrible. Here's a question we, we I want should... to know the answer to. Uh, Funky asks, Hippo, will you ever talk about Jack X? Um. Maybe. I have played it, but I'm not enough to have an opinion yet. Wait a minute. Because Hold the... the presses, everybody. Oh, oh, actually, sorry. Oh. F- finish, your, finish your point, then I'll, then I'll respond. I'm sorry. Uh, no, my, my point's done. Okay, it was just, uh, I see an important question here by Milady on the patron lounge. Uh, the, the thing, it says, how can I throw money at the PCP? Oh, my God, everybody. Go on over to patreon.com slash the procrastinators. <laughs> You've got to be. And then you can great be a part. Great question. Great just, question. Best one now I've heard that, so far. That's an ideal question. That is perfect. That is perfect. Uh, uh, yeah, pledge, pledge money guys uh, pledge a dollar uh, i think is the minimum to get into the patron lounge where we where we check for questions here that uh you know we, we look there more closely than on the twitter uh and you can buy fuck what else oh yeah five dollars to get into the bonus episodes there's four no there's six out now including the death note one we just did uh we got t-shirts available there's a link in the description we get money from that shit and i think that's everything Hashtag PC Pyramid Scheme. Hashtag PC President's Club. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Before we end, um, there's a pressing question from uh, at Santita Mulis on Mm. Twitter. Uh, Are you going to throw a turning 30 party for Ben? I don't know, guys. Are you? (laughs) Well, I'll get back to you in what, like eight months or whatever when it's your birthday again. Um, we'll see. You're gonna, gonna you're gonna have go. to you're gonna have to start planning before then. You guys are gonna have to really <laughs> it's gonna be a really big old bash. We're, we're yeah. gonna we're Ben's gonna walk into the room. We're gonna shout surprise as we all gather around the centerpiece of the grand guillotine in the center of the room. <laughs> 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 we yes, know what please. you really want for your birthday, Ben. We've uh, got you covered. Mm. Mm, you just guys, you guys really, you guys really know what I'm about. His head just um, gonna roll. He's gonna look up at Nate, be like, "You really are the best guy." Ever. <laughs> <laughs> and Nate, and Nate nods. Nate nods, knowing his turn is coming. Not much <laughs> oh, that'll be great. And then one day, you know, in like ten years or whatever, when we all turn thirty, only Munchie will remain as the sole surviving member, and then it'll be his job he'll, to decapitate the, he'll, the next he'll just he'll just wear a necklace of our skulls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would expect nothing less. Yeah. It, 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 he'd wear uh, he'd wear them round round his wrist, like a like a little bracelet on his giant meaty hand, <laughs> on his gigantic f- figure. That's true. As as our power levels dissipate, they will be absorbed by Munchie. As we're all executed in turn, and he will only grow more massive in size. 
as uh, yeah, as, as he does that shit. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. We're whoa, all whoa, done whoa, for whoa. the week. Before we what? go, I what? just want to reiterate again. Hashtag mm. PC Pyramid Scheme. Yes. Uh, tweet it. Tweet about how great your life is. Tweet about how, how, how <laughs> thankful you are for the opportunity to watch the PCP. How you're your own man and how you're making a sustainable living by watching the PCP. <laughs> uh, hashtag PC Presidents Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, make videos showing how rich you are. Uh, how, many, how many material goods you've accumulated. How much wealth you've achieved uh, with the help of the PCP. Yes. Uh, tweet it at everyone. Tweet it at five people, and they are obligated to do the same. Or we right. you will want at least five feed them retweets drugs. on your tweet, and just remember to fake it till you make it. Even yes, if you don't get it the right. first time, don't don't get discouraged. You're Talk rich about from, you're rich from watching the PCP. They can be too if they exactly. just hit that retweet button. Talk make about that how, video. <laughs> how the, the the mere payment of of five dollars to get into the uh, PC Presidents Club has been so mm-hmm. rec- so quickly recouped by the you, paying you, attention you, that we've you been made, doing. You made that money mm-hmm. back tenfold. Yes, exactly. At least, don't be afraid to to, to In... no nobody hates uh, 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 an exaggerator. You <laughs> wait, know, wait, they're wait. they're the most you, celebrated people. You made that mm-hmm. money back tenfold in exposure. <laughs> exactly. Put mm-hmm. that in parentheses yes. and in small font. And you may italicized. not be rich, but we have enriched your lives. Yes, exactly. exactly. Okay, that's it, everybody. But go, go and do that shit. Uh, and uh, send us more questions uh, on Twitter. Uh, use hashtag AskPCP. We review them here. We'll answer them. And there you go. Go to the Patreon. Buy our shirts, etc., etc. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh. Uh. I'm supposed to be. To 